Today's Sports Show on WMIX. On your radio at AM 940 and online at MyWithersRadio.com. Recognized by the Illinois Broadcasters Association as one of the premier radio feature programs in the state, you're about to roam the region with more guests and content courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. Live from the powerhouse, the Saturday Sports Show starts now. And good morning from the Powerhouse. Glad to have you with us for another Saturday sports show. We'll get you caught up in the world of high school football from last night, as well as run down our guest list here in just a moment. Saturday sports show every week here on WMIX, online at MyWithersRadio.com. It's courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. There we go. You bet it is. Of course, busy lineup for you today. We'll talk with Jared Shaner, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams. We'll talk with Dan Mings after that. We'll talk about the Johnson City Sessor game from last night. Hall of Fame broadcaster Mike Reese will appear on the program. Of course, the longtime voice of SIU Athletics. WMIX sports correspondent John Shadowins will appear. We'll talk about the Carmine El Dorado game with him last night. Of course, we told you last week, John will appear each and every week as our correspondent as he goes to a different game every week. We'll talk Mount Vernon Rams golf with Quinn McClure today. We'll also talk Fairfield Mules football with Justin Townsend. As Fairfield got another big win last night, they are now, what, 12-game winning streak in week one of the season? 12 games. They have won in a row. 12 games in week one. It's not a bad way to start your year the last 12 years. Anna Jonesboro, once they complete their game this morning, will get another one added to their list as well. <laughs> Carbondale and Centray also added to their list. So those are your four teams that have a decent winning streak going in week one. Of course, streaks mean you have to win two Therefore, those that won last night to start a new one does not count yet. Of course, it was definitely a busy night of high school football last night. Everybody got started in the state of Illinois except for two teams. We'll tell you more about that when we get to our scoreboard here. If we're actually, if we're ready for our scoreboard, we can get to our scoreboard. Hey, you caught me off guard. I know. Um, my, my apologies. Yeah. I'm used to it, though. Um, got to find it here. Things have moved around Understandable. everywhere. Understandable. Last of sh- night in a game you heard... On AM 940 and saw on MyWithersRadio.com, Rochester beat Mount Vernon 54-22. Whoa. And I'm going to read the scores of the first nine, of the nine opponents on the Mount Vernon schedule as put on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash WMX Sports. Mascuda put up a double nickel on Breeze Central 55-26. Mattoon beat Triad 20-14. Altoff beat Collinsville 20-13. Marion over Granite City 41-35. Carbondale is a king in Jackson County, beating Murphy 25-14. O'Fallon all over Cahokia, 42-8. Centralia beat Salem, 40-14. Harrisburg beat Mount Carmel, 28-12. You're keeping track. Mount Vernon opponents last night went 6-3. and three. So six playoff points out of the gate already for the Rams in Week 1. In the Black Diamond, of course, CZR beat Elverado Trico in the forfeit game, 2-zip. Chris Hugo picked that game accurately, as did the point spread. Just kidding. Johnson City over Sessler, Waltonville, Woodlawn, 40-14. Fairfield, as we mentioned, wins again in Week 1, beating Hamilton County 52-17. El Dorado beat Carmi 26-14. In non-conference play, Benton beat Carterville 32-22. Heron over Massac County in a defense optional game, 60-35. Highland beats DuCoin 17-14. Carlisle comes back to beat Nashville 25-22 after trailing 16-6 at the half. Pinckneyville starts off winning ways again in 2012, winning at Redbud 26-8 in Dupo. Beat Sparta 50-24. Of course, the Anna Jonesboro game was delayed before halftime last night. A.J. was beating Frankfurt 29-0. The lights went out at A.J. Couldn't get him back on. So A.J.'s going to travel up to Frankfurt today. There's probably a lower-class game going on. They'll start that second half at 10-30, play the varsity game, and then move on. The other game today is Chester at Vienna Goreville at 1 o'clock this afternoon. If you want other scores of interest, also listed on our Facebook page, some different scores. Columbia beat East Alton Wood River 48-13. Greenville over Litchfield 49-21. Casey Westfield beat Alney 44-16. Waterloo shuts out Freeburg 41-0. Charleston beat Rantoul 49-6. It was Jacksonville over Lincoln 48-0. Then, of course, Lawrenceville beat Edwards County 61-6. Floor over Red Hill 21-zip. Quincy beat Alton 40 to 12. You took if you took the over in the St. Joe Ogden Marshall game, you got it. There were 95 points scored as St. Joe beat Marshall 67 28. What are they doing playing that one in week one? That's like a week 11, week 12 game. Well, it might be again. Could be. I mean, it could be. So, any real shockers from last night? I was kind of surprised. Ducoin usually always a favorite, even though uh, against a much bigger in terms of enrollment Highland team. I was surprised by that one, 17-14. Shockers to me, number one, El Dorado beating Carmi sure. on the road. That's huge. Brandon Hampton, that's a 
that's a, you know, I know they've been in the playoffs, but that's the kind of win that can change, I mean, absolutely just send that program into the stratosphere they haven't been in since the 80s. You look at, and I, I call this, and I say it again, Altoff is a 4A school beating Collinsville, who's 8A. That, to me, is an amazing, amazing win for Altoff to do that. I go down the list. I think that Benton, uh, Carlisle beating Nashville after being down 16-6, that's a lot of guts, guts and glory for Carlisle in that opening game. You know, those are the three that stand out to me. I think the others were pretty well okay. Ducoin, again, you know, they lose again in week one. Does the panic button set in there in South Lake, Western Perry County? Who knows? But, um, you know, that's kind of a surprise. Could Ducoin next two weeks, Harrisburg and Heron, could the Indians be 0 3 before conference play? Certainly not an easy schedule for Drew Coyne. And we need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. Run down those scores periodically throughout the broadcast today. The Sports Show, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, that's what healthcare should be. We'll take that break. When we come back, we'll have Jared Shaner, head coach of Mount Vernon Ranch Football, back after these. Do you feel like there isn't enough time to get everything done? Back to school bills draining your wallet? Hi, this is Joy Schrader, mortgage specialist with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon, and I can help. By refinancing your current mortgage to a lower rate mortgage with People's National Bank, you can put some of that money back in your wallet. Stop by today and let People's National Bank ease your back to school debt. People's National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital. With our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge, the entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, Call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIXMyWeathersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us, of course, as we stroll through the first segment of this broadcast. We're presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. Of course it is. And, of course, we ran down the football scores earlier. If you want to stay up to date on those, you can find them online at our Facebook page, WMIX Sports. Facebook.com slash WMIX Sports for all the scores from last night. We are joined now by Mount Vernon Rams football coach Jared Shaner. Of course, you heard that game on AM 940. Watched it online at MyWithersRadio.com. Coach, good morning. Good morning, guys. Rochester came in, Coach, and, and we, we knew what Rochester was going to be. They were going to be a team with quick strike offense. They are going to be a team that was pretty sound defensively. And uh, certainly no slouch last night were the Rochester Rockets. Yeah, they're... Uh... You know, we had talked about it uh, a few different times coming in, but um, you know, you don't you don't accidentally win a couple state championships in a row. Um, and uh, you know, I think the the people that watched last night kind of got a got a glimpse of that. There, they're good looking kids, and they're really well coached. They play hard, and um, they're just they're a really good football team. And um, it would not surprise me if they make another run this year. Well, and we, you know, a lot of the ink and, and talk went to Garrett Dooley, their linebacker slash run, running back, and going to Wisconsin, and you know, a couple plays from scrimmage, and he has two touchdowns. What what goes through your mind knowing that this kid is is as advertised, and seeing him just get a couple of rushes and a couple of touches, and immediately turn into touchdowns? Right. Well, it's definitely disheartening, um, and you know, when you're on the sideline, you you have an idea, obviously, of the play that the other team called, you know, you've been scouting them and, and you've got a, um, a general idea, but a lot of times you can't see exactly what's going on. If it was, you know, missed a lineman or assignment or a tackle or, um, you know, great play by them or, or what it was. Um, and, and so you're just, you know, you're frustrated. You're looking for answers. Um, and, uh, you know, unfortunately we didn't, we didn't have a whole lot for him. He's a, he's a load. And, and that's not even to mention the, the kid they put in front of him to block for him was about 40 pounds heavier than him, and um, I would say probably even a better-looking athletic specimen. When you look at last night, and I'm done with talking about the game, it's a new day, you got to move on, you got to get ready for week two at this uh, point. Danny, I knew I wanted to talk to you this morning. <laughs> See, I, I'm one of those that once, once – and I'm not. I'm not into coaching right now, but I'm saying it's one of those deals where game over, slept, get up. It's time to move on. Week two's underway here, as far as I'm concerned. 
when you look for look at the game last night, there are so many things to bring out of this game that are positive. Talk about those that you saw, at least if you you know in your own eye during the game, and or if you've watched the film already. <laughs> yeah, I've watched it multiple times. Um, that's what coaches do; they don't sleep on Friday nights. Um, but yeah, you know what there is, and, and uh, sometimes it's hard to take a step back and um, and realize that. You know, the night of, or even the next day, um, it definitely stays with you for a little bit. But there was positives, and and one of the things I told the kids afterwards, and um, you know, this is not a not a knock on anybody else, but it's more of a compliment to Rochester. Is that I, I don't know that we're going to see another team like that. Um, they're they're really good, and and I'm 99 percent sure we're not going to line up against. Um, two inside linebackers that look like those guys and, and run like those guys and play like those guys. Um, their quarterback is tremendous, and they just have, uh, as you guys know, a quarterback factory there. Um, and I was just watching some film on the phone rang this morning, and he made a couple throws that, that there's not a lot of kids in high school that can make. Um, he's just that good. So, so that's definitely a positive. We, you know, we made a lot of mistakes. Um, but I can promise you, you know, they watch their film, and every coach around the country uh, watches his film this morning and says, boy, we got to get better, we got to do this better or that. And that's definitely the case for us. Um, but, but we did a few good things, too. Well, definitely some good things. And, and going back to last night briefly, not focusing on, on some of the things that did not go quite so well, but focusing on some of the things that went well, um, I thought Hunter looked pretty good on the return team, having having a touchdown on the return especially. I thought Reeves looked pretty good at times, able to locate his receivers. I thought Pat Bradford had some good hands last night. I thought Young had great hands. Um, but you, you take a look at the poise that everybody showed throughout the game, even when times got tough, and especially some of the reserves that came in, giving it their all. And I thought Hink, the Hinken kid especially – um, looked pretty good last night. He's uh, he's he's a fun kid. He's just a football kid, um, just a sophomore, and he's going to be a really good football player for us, I think. Um, that was that was maybe the thing I'm I'm most happy with. Um, you know, it, they put up a lot of points on the scoreboard, and there's a bunch of different reasons you could look at every scoring play, and if it was a missed tackle or multiple missed tackles, or or just a great play by the offense, because that happens sometimes. Um, but ultimately, I really did feel like our kids played pretty hard throughout the entire game. Um, there were definitely uh, definitely plays here and there where where we maybe let up or, or took a play off here and there, um, and we've got to we've got to eliminate those. But up and down the line, from you know the opening kickoff till the end, I, I thought our kids played hard. And, and you guys mentioned the reserves that came in. That's really important. I mean, those kids are playing against other sophomores. Um, and maybe juniors who don't get on the field as much, and, and it's really good for our kids to come out and you know and, and have that drive and want to move the ball and want to get stops on defense. And um, so I was I was happy with that aspect. Well, and one thing you just mentioned, I thought that was a nail on the head right there, was the fact that Rochester is unlike anybody on the Rams' schedule. And no disrespect to our opponents, but you'd have to assume that Rochester might run the table on the Mount Vernon schedule. That's just how good they are. But you look ahead now to Mascuda here in Week 2 out of the Mississippi Valley Conference, a team that we had a close matchup with last year. How do you kind of tell your kids going into this new week and this new day, last night was just kind of a, you don't want to call it an anomaly, anomaly but, right. I mean, how do, you, how do you tell them that you, you played pretty well against a very, very tough team, and now we need to go out and beat Mascuda? Right. Well, hey, that, you pretty much said it, Chris. Um you could probably take over for me right now. Uh, that's pretty much what I said um, last night in the huddle, or when we broke at the end. That, um, gosh, we, you know, we made plenty of mistakes, and we've got to get better. Um, but again, the good news is, you know, I, I'm I, we're not going to play another team of that caliber, I don't think. Um, and now we just turn to Mascuda, and and you know, it should we we played a poor game last year against them and lost by three. Um, I think it's going to be a really competitive game, and and there's no we've talked about it. There's no games that are gimmies. We're not at that level yet, um, but it's definitely a game that we should come out and compete really well, and um, you know, and give ourselves a chance to win if we eliminate some mistakes. So that's basically what I told the kids that um, you know we've got to watch this film, learn from some mistakes, and then come out and go to Mascuda and and really compete and 
and give ourselves a chance to win. Be so one and one. A Muscoota team that returns seven starters on both sides of the football also picked second in the conference this year. Triad obviously uh, picked to win that conference again. What do you know about them, and and what what do you need to prepare for next week? As obviously next week starts right now. Right. Um, well, we haven't. Uh, we'll, we'll exchange film with them today. Um, so we'll get to watch their game. I was a little bit surprised. Um, I think they put up, if I remember right, 55 points last night, um, which uh, last year, um, their opening week, they lost um, to the same Breeze Central team. Um, and then, uh, again, we had a really close game with them in week two, and, and then they struggled for a couple more weeks after that. So I was a little bit surprised, and I'll be interested to see the film and kind of how that unfolded. Um, and and how much more improved they are. I felt like, you know, they're a team very similar to us in that, you know, their record was about the same as ours last year. Um, they return about the same number of guys. Uh, and I just think that, um, you know, it should be a really, really competitive game for us. Uh, and when you go in the day, I think you need to just go in. And, and when I look at last night, some a couple people asked me this morning, what, how how good is Rochester? And I'll go back to that. I just said I don't think there's anybody down in our neck of the woods that can play with them, whether it's 3, 4, or 5, or 6A, that probably 6A may have a shot at them. I don't know if there's anybody can play with them. And, again, you look at your kids and your players, how resilient are they, do you think they'll be this morning in, you know, as far as getting over this game and moving on? Um, well, two things. I think you know, the first thing, I think you're right, and I – and I really I have all the respect for you know the other coaches in our conference because they're really good coaches and we have some good quality football teams. Um, I I do I, I just don't think there's a, a Rochester in, in our area right now, um, and that's not to say like I said we've got good football here. They just for whatever reason they're they're on a whole other level right now. Um, so that being said, like I said, I'm excited about the rest of our schedule, and then. Um, I'm drawing a blank. What were, we, what were we talking about the second half, Danny? The second I half apologize. was good, the resiliency of the kids getting over, oh, you know, yeah. not putting – you know, sometimes you sometimes kids put a lot of stock in that first game because everybody's looking forward to it for months. And right. then if it doesn't go your way, how, how do you think that your team will respond to getting beyond that and getting to week two? i, I got to tell you, I really think they're going to respond well. Um, just a couple of comments that I even heard last night um, as kids were walking off the field – and in our team huddle at the end of the game, uh, this is something that you know coaches um, maybe don't get to say because it's not true. Or, uh, but I got to tell you, we've got a great group of kids. They're really good kids. Um, they're fun to be around. Um, they've got good personalities, and they're they're respectful young men. And, and that's really what we're trying to work on. But uh, I think our kids are really going to bounce back well. Um, again, I heard some comments going off the field that hey, we got to get better, but but uh, we got Mascuda now, and, and we're going to go out and compete and play well. And and uh, I I really do feel like we're going to come out and have a good week of practice. Um, hope we learn from some mistakes, and uh, you know, play a great game on Friday. Of course, off the wall question time. WMIX Sports social media question of the week. And um, what hey, drink do as, you have? As we get to it, Chris <laughs> West, I have not heard it yet. Was Kerry Martin messing with me last week? No. Uh-uh. He wasn't. It was no. the same answer? Yes. yes. <laughs> well, I'll t- have you guys talked to Kerry today? Are you going to talk to him? No. Okay, well, if he gives the same answer, I'm calling him. If he gives the same answer, I'll know something's <laughs> up. It's the Clairvoyant South 7 Conference is what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but <laughs> what drink do you have to have in the morning to get your day started? I, I know it probably goes hand-in-hand hand with a certain addictive uh, convenience store food, but what drink do you have to have? It really depends on if I'm it, how depressed I am. I guess. Okay. Um, <laughs> after, after a week one loss versus maybe a week a week two win, what would you have on those two mornings? This morning was a Mountain Dew morning. Next next Saturday is going to be a Diet Coke morning. There you go. Mountain Dew when I'm feeling real bad, and then uh, when things are going good, I think, gosh, I really don't need all those extra calories in this Mountain Dew. I think I'll go with a Diet Coke today. Very nice, and I assume that goes hand-in-hand hand with maybe a sausage, egg, and, and cheese breakfast pizza. Well, I, I don't want to – yeah, it does. <laughs> we we got to stop doing that. <laughs> Those things are addictive. Yes, they are. Shaner, we'll, we'll talk to you, of course, over the course of the next week, and good luck next week at Mascuda. Thanks, guys. That's Jared Shaner, head coach of the Mount Vernon Rams. And, 
obviously you hear in his voice that that's a man that maybe did not get a lot of rest last night. Of course, probably started watching video as soon as he could and uh, going to do what they can next week to, to defeat the Mascuda Indians on the road. And the Rams lost last night, of course, 54-22 to the Rockets of Rochester. But there's no shame in that. We do need to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have our next guest on the program. We'll talk Cesar Valera, Waltonville, Woodlawn versus Johnson City last night with Johnson City head coach Dan Minks. This is the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We'll be back after these. The tradition of fine vehicles and great service continues at Second Chance Auto. They've been providing quality cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs for families like yours for over 32 years. And many are priced under $10,000. Plus, most have a three-month or 3,000-mile warning. Bank rate financing available with instant approval. No gimmicks, no pressure, just honest deals on great vehicles. From your friends and neighbors at Second Chance Auto. Living and contributing back to the community they serve. Located on Route 142 East in Mount Vernon. Or call 244-4582. What an emergency happened. Time is everything, and you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIXMyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you along for the ride as we talk a little high school football here on the Saturday Sports Show, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. We'll get to those scores once again just a little bit later on the broadcast. But for now, we welcome Johnson City Indians head football coach Dan Mings. His team last night had a 40-14 to win over the Red Devils of Cesar Waltonville, Woodlawn. Of course, we welcome Dan Mings. Good morning, Sandbagger. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. How are you? <laughs> you know what? Doing pretty good. Uh, last night really seemed to go in favor of the Indians. You win that one 40-14, close early. But, you know what? Another good opening night for Johnson City football last night. Well, it was. And you know what? Sester's a pretty good football team. Um, they do a lot of things very well. You know, uh, defensively, you know, especially. And you say, okay, well, you put up 40 points. But I'm going to tell you something. They were relentless. And just coming after you. So I mean, uh, a, a lot of props, you know, go to Coach Hollis, and you know, it, there's nothing like coaching your first ever, you know, varsity football game. And and uh, him and the staff did a great job last night. Um, you know, I think the difference uh, in the game was our weightlifting program, you know, and the the athletic PE that we have here at school, and you know, those types of things. And you know, we were we were disciplined. Uh, we had a muff punt as a turnover, and that was in the last minute of the game uh, with some substitute guys in there. But we didn't turn the ball over other than that. You know, we threw the ball pretty well when, when we needed to throw the ball. And, uh, you know, our offensive line is, is it's pretty big and solid. So, I mean, we, we, we had a really good night last night, but it was not easy. Reading a box score, I mean, obviously everybody knows that you and your offense likes to run the football. Tyler Johnson, Josh Woodall, and Jory Key combined for 234 yards. I look at the other thing was your passing efficiency, four out of six. How do those two things go hand in hand for your offense to run? Well, it's four out of six, and we had two drops. You know, I mean, it was one of those things that um, when we run the ball so effectively, that brings, you know, eight, nine, ten people up in the box and that type of thing, and and uh, it's, it's easy to get behind somebody, you know, whenever they're focused on stopping the run. And, uh, you know, Coach McCoy called a great game, and, it was it was the game plan, you know. Run, 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 run. Pass when we want to. Don't pass when you have to. Uh, you know, if you can always uh, dictate that, then you know football is not that hard. But a lot of times you can't dictate that because the other teams are you know really prepared for you and those types of things. But it was um it, it was a good performance by uh, Levi last night throwing the ball and, and Jake catching it. With that said, you were one, and Justin Townsend on the show later, I'm asking the same question. You were two of several coaches around the state last night that opened up against familiar opponents but new coaches. How difficult is that to open up a season with the unfamiliarity of a new coach and not knowing what's going to get brought to you in a week one of an opening season? Well, it's, it's a summer of panic. 
You know, I mean, that, that's what it is. It's just a summer of panic. You, you don't know what they're going to do. You try to find out everything you can about them. You know, you, you research their history, you know, where they went to school, what kind of backgrounds they have. I mean, it's almost you need a private detective, you know, to figure out, you know, what's this guy about, who is he, you know, and I found out a lot about Coach Hollis, and, you know, all of it was good. You know, you see, he, you know, he's got a real strong uh, faith background, and, you know, he's done his time on the lower levels, and he's earned a shot, and he's going to be a good one. I guarantee it. You look at the game last night, and you're up 21-14 at the half, and you kind of turned it on a shutout in the second half by your defense. Run was very little, if any, for Cesar Valer Waltonville Woodlawn last night. Talk about your defense a little bit and how good they were. Well, they're pretty good. You know, last night they were. Um, we just outmanned them in a couple of positions, you know, with our defensive linemen. And, again, I, I think it was just strength development. <clears throat> I don't, you know, kids are kids everywhere. You know, I don't know that. You know, they're a lot different, but, you know, we're fortunate enough that we've got a really good weightlifting program here with Coach Goodley, and our kids have made some incredible gains here in the last year. I mean, they, they, they really have. Um, they love the weight room, you know, and that's part of, you know, the, the biggest compliment that we got was Coach Labui last night. He said, man, your kids are really fit. You know, even our big kids were really fit. You know, so, I mean, that was a, a huge compliment to, to what we get to do here at uh, J.C. Okay, big win on the road last night. You get a group of kids fired up, go to Cessville or Waltonville Woodlawn, big rivalry over the years, we get a win, and you have to turn around next week. A, Carmike comes to town off a tough loss at home in El Dorado, and B, the frivolity and fun of opening up at Turf Field at Johnson City High School. How are you and your staff going to get everybody lined up and calmed down to make it a, it's still a football game out there? Well, it's just hard to explain. Our kids, um, you know, they appreciate and they love the, the, the new field and everything. But you know what? We haven't really – it's just football. You know, it's just football for us. And, and uh, it's going to be great. You know, uh, at our Meet the Team night, we had, you know, 1,200, 1,500 people here. And the stands were packed. And they were lined up around the gates and the fences. And, you know, it's sort of – we got a, an idea of what the atmosphere is going to be like. You know, that type of thing. And um, we don't have to worry about getting our kids up or down or whatever for Carmine. You know, they uh, they embarrassed us last year. So we have to play well. You know, they sort of got a number here. And, you know, it's one of those uh, things that, you know, I don't like it when somebody really has my number. So we're going to uh, start preparing here in about, you know, 15, 20 minutes and give it our best shot. Final question for you, and we promise you it's not baseball or anything off topic or crazy, but it, you know, for you, uh, this you know, we, we got certain rules for everybody else, and then we got the damn things rules on Saturday morning. The, the question this week is: What drink do you need to have in the morning to get your day started? You know what? I, I find that there is probably nothing better in the world than that first sip of a McDonald's Coke. Now, you know, by my um girth, I guess we could say, let's just, you know, I stop in McDonald's a lot, so the, the Coke is, uh, that's where it's at. Do you prefer the plastic cup or the styrofoam cup? You know what, I was a big fan of the plastic cup. Really? Yeah. Yeah, not crazy about the new lids, but. See, know, that's the problem. I'll deal with. The styrofoam with the red lid was absolutely perfect, mm -hmm. but then yeah, they tried, uh, they, they tried this experiment with the plastic cup and the new lid, and the lid always comes off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the lid, I think, was a mistake. But you know what? Whenever you know, I don't think Ray Kroc really cares what I think. So, well, but, uh, I... he does. He does make a good Coke. <laughs> that that he does. Dan, good luck against Carmine next week, and we hope to talk to you again soon. All right, thanks, guys. <laughs> That's Dan Ming, head coach of the Johnson City Indians. <laughs> I don't know that Ray Kroc is going to care about much of anything. However, well, no, probably not. I don't think anybody cares. I mean. <laughs> We'll, well get into this later, but as far as McDonald's not gonna be, goes... not going to be real easy for, for I, Ray Kroc to care. I'm sorry, but he's the styrofoam red cup, under. red lid was the best. Because sure. in this right now, uh, I've got a different uh, sweet tea in my hand, but right. it's melted. There's nothing to hold it. 
course, we need to later. need to run down scores from last night one more time. Actually, probably about five more times, six more. Who knows? We'll keep yeah. running them down. In case we're not giving to you enough, though, you can find them on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Sports, where you'll find a myriad scores from last night. Looks like we're ready to go on that scoreboard update. Let's I, go with it. I am trained to do it multiple times. Here we go. Rochester over Mount Vernon, 54-22. Mascuda put the double nickel up on Bree Central, 55-26. Mattoon beat Triad 20-14. Altoff, or, or Altoff, beat Collinsville 20-13. Marion over Granite City, 41-35. Carbondale wins Jackson County's battle, 25-14. O'Fallon over Cokia, 42-8. Centralia over Salem, 40-14. And Harrisburg beat Mount Carmel, 28-12. Those teams have played three times in one calendar year. Black Diamond last night, CZR over ET in the forefoot, 2-zip. J.C. over SVWW, as you heard, 40-14. Fairfield beat Hamilton County, 52-17. And El Dorado beat Carmi, 26-14. Non-conference, Benton over Carterville, 32-22 on the road. Heron beats Massac County, 60-35. Highland gives Ducoin another loss on the Van Meter Field turf, 17-14. Carlisle over Nashville, 25-22. Pinckneyville beat Redbud, 26-8. And Dupo beat Sparta, 50-24. Scores of interest all still listed. We have Lawrenceville over Edwards County, 61-6. Floor over Red Hill, 21-0. St. Joe Ogden beat Marshall, 67-28. Charleston over Rantoul, 49-6. And Waterloo beat Freeburg, 41-0. And Casey Westfield over Olney, 44-16. Definitely an interesting night of high school football last night. And we had the call of the Rochester-Mount Vernon game, obviously, here on AM 940. Video was online at MyWithersRadio.com. It'll be the same web, same dial location. Friday night as the Rams travel to Mascuda, pregame will be 640. But taking a look around last night, Mattoon Triad, that score somewhat surprised me a little bit. I know Mattoon was supposed to be improved, but we've heard a lot of great things about Triad, especially with them being projected to sit atop the Mississippi Valley. And granted, they're expected to sit atop the Valley every, each and every year. But to, to see the number one and number two teams in that conference, although in reverse order, respectively, weeks two and three, and on the road, it's definitely going to be interesting week two and three for the Mount Vernon Rams. Very interesting. Number one, the fact that you go on the road. There's so many variables that come into play for the next two weeks. It's a decent short trip over to Mascuda. Obviously much longer to go to Triad the week three, but going on the road, you don't know what to expect. Being on the road the first time, blah, blah, blah. You know, it'll be interesting. And uh, Mascuda is one of those teams a few years ago had some tremendous talent in 4A, made a deep run. And then kind of bottom out a little bit. They come back in this year. A lot of expectations on a group. Triad's been the king of the hill for many years in the Valley. We'll see them in week three. They have lost a lot of talent, even though, you know, Mascuda has gotten has seven starters returning. Triad has five on offense, six on defense back, but a younger version of the Triad Knights. Of course, the Triad interview is always one that writes itself. Triad, do they still run the option? How are the Rams going to prepare for the option? The, then and there, and that's usually just right. the same thing every year. I mean, it's like clockwork. And, you know, they've, they've been running the option very well for many years. Just did not pan out last night for the new Apollo member, Mattoon Green Wave. And, of course, in the Apollo Conference, good move for the Green Wave to get him back in there. And they're a team not that far removed, I believe, from, what, a semifinal run in 07? Right. I believe they beat Marion in the second round and kind of went, maybe went to the quarters. I don't, I don't recall exactly how far they went. But, you know, we're not that far from that for the Green Wave. So kind of impressive when you think about that. Shrine Bowl, Centralia Salem was close for a while. Centralia ultimately would pull away. I believe Rashad Campbell had the opening score of the game with an 80-yard kickoff return in that one. So Centralia definitely has that firepower back. Harrisburg, Mount Carmel, uh, you hear a lot. Here's the thing about Carmel. You, you know they're going to be good every year. Sometimes you hear a little bit of sandbagging, but a, a lot of people projecting the Aces to maybe not have the, the gusto that they've had over the past few years. And, but Harrisburg, a team that's supposed to have quite a bit of firepower itself and projected to win the Ohio side of the River to River by many pundits. So that game, you, you, you never really know how good or bad either team is in that first week. Well, it's one of those deals you don't really know how good or bad anybody's really going to be. Right. I mean, obviously the obvious after week one. Your best and most improvement for football teams – at any level, happen between week one and week two. You will see a greater improvement out of teams once they get out under the lights and play or whatever. It's one of those things when you talk about, you know, New Coin loses again on the turf at home. It's shocking. They're probably about ready to rip that stuff up. I was going to ask that. I mean, How that's much longer before they go back to grass? AJ, Pinckneyville, Murfreesboro, and now Highland all on the turf. I think Heron. They beat Heron all in game one. Then. You know, you look at Mount Carmel, 7-2, 6-3 and two, six and three for them is a down year. I still think they'll be okay. I think by week nine they'll be have the ship righted. I think 
you know, Nashville is a concern. There's a lot of expectations in Nashville. They had a couple of people get hurt last night from what I was told. So, you know, it's week one. You know, and, and usually if by next week at this time, we're going to know those teams, 2-0, 1-1, 0-2, who've got that shot. Next week we'll have those stats that you can see what teams do when they start out. One of those three ways what usually happens. Exactly. We need to take a break. When we come back, we'll have Hall of Fame broadcaster Mike Reese. We'll preview the Saluki startup next week, next Thursday night at Eastern. We'll also talk about his program, Linen Live, every Monday night on Sister Station X95 and the Saluki Sports Network. All of that to come here on the Saturday Sports Show, presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what health care should be. Back after these. More Americans are on a move today than ever before. One of the most popular modes of transportation is the motorcycle. Motorcycles take us to our jobs, school, to the beach, and all around the country. If you're a bike rider, your Pekin Insurance Agency, Page Insurance on Crown View in Mount Vernon, wants to make sure you have the best insurance protection while you're riding. Ask about the money-saving auto cycle discount and the experienced driver discount, too. Call Page Insurance at 2427000 today about motorcycle insurance from Pekin Insurance. This is Steve Savard. Your home for Rams football is AM 940 WMIX. Hello, I'm Morgan. A few months ago, my gynecologist said that I needed surgery, a hysterectomy. I thought for sure I'd have to leave Southern Illinois to have it done, but I was surprised to find out that not only could Good Samaritan Regional Health Center do the surgery, they had one of the nation's most advanced surgical systems. They called it the Da Vinci. It was basically this robot that translated whatever movements the surgeon was making into even tinier, more precise movements. My doc even told me that over a hundred of these procedures had been done at Good Samaritan. Well, the surgery went great, and I was out of the hospital in no time. And because I was close to home, my whole family was with me every step of the way. Good Samaritan is my new hospital of choice. And starting in 2013, they'll be opening an all-new regional health center with even more advanced services. It makes me happy to know they'll still be around when my kids have families and need specialized medical care. That means a lot to me. Good Samaritan Regional Health Center. Raising a hospital, raising the bar. The 2012 model year in clearance event is in full swing. Hi, Mike Russell, General Manager, Schmidt Ford of Salem. If it deals what you've been waiting for, now is the time. On select models, choose from 0% financing or rebates up to $6,000. Trade your current vehicle in and receive up to $1,000 additional rebate on many models. Are you a Farm Bureau member? Great. Receive an additional $500 on most models. You can see the time to save is now. Come see us at Schmidt Ford of Salem, 1815 West Main, Salem, Illinois. Or give us a call at 618-548-1711. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you along for the ride, courtesy of Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. Chris Hugo with Mike Richardson, Danny Zerwinski, and studio here from the Powerhouse at 3501. As we are prepared, and we're glad to welcome Hall of Fame voice of the Salukis, Mike Reese. Reese, good morning. Good morning, Chris, Danny, Mike, how are you guys? You know, I, good. I think we're all doing pretty well this Very morning. Well, well, that's good. Yeah, it's for once. It usually doesn't happen all three of us at once. But <laughs> would you tell me if you weren't if you weren't doing well? Publicly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I, lo- nice. I, I love I love to complain. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> All of that out of the way, one thing I can't complain about and I'm very excited about is the return of Saluki football at Eastern Illinois on Thursday night. 6.30 is the actual kickoff. Your pregame is what, about 5.30, 4.30, somewhere around there? If not noon, it's a lengthy one. <laughs> <laughs> but Saluki Sports Network returns for yet another year, and of course I know you get started with Linden Live on Monday night, your, your, right. your coach's show, and as we talk about Saluki football, I would be in denial if I said last year wasn't somewhat of a disappointment at 4-7, and seven, but things look like they could be on the up-and-up this year with the Dogs. Coach Lennon now in his fifth year. Last year, though, if he broke into three parts, two of those three parts were successful. He had the 2-1 and one start, the 2-0 and oh finish. It was that 0-6, oh 0-5 oh in the middle that was kind of what took last year down, I thought. Well, there's no doubt, and there's no doubt last year was disappointing. I don't, uh, there's, there's no reason to couch it. And the stretch that you talked about where they lost uh, all of those games and it ruined the season, most of the games were tight games, and they just didn't have the stuff at the end to win those games. And they were all league games, and so when you combine the fact that it's a league in which uh, the national champion came from and that team tied for the league title, you know, it's a very competitive league as it will be um, this year. Southern didn't make plays to use the current football cliche, both on offense and defense. And there were too many there were too many big plays allowed on defense, especially at the worst times. 
and there were too few uh, big plays on offense, and the big plays, the few big plays they had on offense, um, never seemed to come at the most uh, needed time. And the season really went downhill. Um, it seemed like in the first month when Paul McIntosh got hurt and Western picked a pass late in a game that should have gone to overtime and Southern should have won in overtime because it had the momentum, but through a bad pass it was picked for a touchdown and Western won the game and Southern didn't write itself again until November. I look at the schedule this year, Mike. You're the usual suspects of conference foes. you got the Division One opponent at Miami of Ohio. One thing that stands out to me is the bye week, which is between the next to last week and last week. Yeah. I mean, is that really going to help at all by the end of that part of the schedule? Well, if they're playing well, it's a bad time to have a bye. If they're playing terrible, it, uh, it, would, it would be like it would be in any terrible season. It wouldn't be a factor. Now, if they're borderline, will it be a positive or a negative? And um, I don't, I'm not going to claim fellows to be smart enough uh, to know that. I do know that the way the college game is structured right now, buys matter. Um, a week off can tend to be um, a significant help to a club, and especially a club that ends up succeeding well. The buy seems to be a healer for them. The opening month is key for Southern. Um, three of the uh, first four are on the road. Three of the four on paper are very winnable games. And Miami of Ohio, um, while Southern will be an underdog in that game, won't be a decided underdog. And the Salukis actually caught a break when Missouri went into the SEC. Uh, that date with Miami of Ohio, September 8th, Southern was supposed to be playing Missouri that day. And so it ended up playing Miami of Ohio when Missouri went to the SEC and needed that date in order to play Georgia. Um, it's a good trade for Southern. Miami of Ohio for Missouri, it became a more winnable game, and financially it ended up being uh, the same amount of money. So uh, that ended up actually being a break. Eastern has a new coach and a new system. Southeast Missouri is game three in the home opener, and it recently lost its projected starting quarterback to injury. And the fourth game is Missouri State, which is now the doormat in the Missouri Valley Conference. And so the first month of the season is critical to Southern this season because October really heats up. Critical and key, two words you just mentioned there. I look at SIU football this. Jerry Kill's been gone long enough now that this is Dale Lennon's team, Dale Lennon's program. New football facility, that shine, you know, everybody, it's not the newness. It's a great facility, but it's not going to keep drawing people. How much pressure, because there's a lot to win at the college level, how much pressure is on Coach Lennon and his staff in his 2012 season? Well, the short answer is the pressure was abated when they gave him a two-year extension. So he has three years remaining at Southern this year, which was the final year on his original contract as Southern's coach, and then two years on the extension. But indirectly, you're right, it's time for him to win. Uh, these are all of his players. I still think that Southern is set up probably for 13, 2013 to have a stronger team than 2012. I don't think Dale Lennon would argue with you that it's been a significant adjustment and a tougher adjustment from at least, at the very least, from Division II where he was at North Dakota to uh, Division I AA at uh, SIU. And it's also a much different world in southern Illinois than it is in, in North Dakota uh, as well. There's no doubt that the pressure on Saluki football to win uh, is unlike it's ever been in the 34 years that that I've been around it. And it's all because of the facilities. They've built a palace. And they built the palace based largely on the success from 2003 through 2007. Lennon won championships his first two years in 2008 and 2009. Um, and so it appeared that the program was on a good, uh, solid ground, and it was. But the last two years, I mean, they won 11 ball games in 2009, and they've won nine total the last two years. That's unacceptable given Southern's uh, current facilities, which are among the best, if not the best, in the Missouri Valley Conference. So it's time to show strides. Um, it'll be hard to show strides, however, in that, in that month of October where they're playing the likes of Northern Iowa, Youngstown, and North Dakota State, three of the top teams in the Missouri Valley Conference, uh, two of which will be on the road, uh, if you don't get off to a good start. I think you'll know the success of Southern season 
uh, come uh, the third week of September. You mentioned the facilities, and in your time and tenure there, the first question is this, do you still have the trailer from McAndrew Stadium? No, thank God. <laughs> I didn't want it. I wanted to be the first one to uh, drive the wrecking ball into that uh, piece of blank. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, so no, but and I wasn't allowed to. They said there was some union violation if I did that. So, and some safety issue as well, which I I totally understood. But no, thankfully that uh, that uh, that facility <laughs> does. You know what? It might be somewhere, but I am pleased to report to you. I have no clue where it is, and I hope. Uh, I, I think it's it's been uh, it's been destroyed because. Every once in a while, when I'm feeling a little low, fellas, I pull out the vi- video of the demolition of McAndrew Stadium, and that kind of fires me up. Well, I, I, that's why I said in your time and tenure, there's been so much change. You know, McAndrew's gone, new football stadium. Uh, the arena has been renovated. You have Abe uh, Martin Fields done, Charlotte West Stadium. You have all these renovations. Did you ever think that was going to happen 10, 15 years ago for um, SIU Athletics? Yeah, I, you know, you had your doubt, especially McAndrew Stadium, because football wasn't winning. And if Southern doesn't turn the corner under kill, Southern doesn't have football right now. Because every time Southern stunk and thought about dropping football, uh, McAndrew Stadium was still viable. Well, McAndrew, um, you know, it didn't have more than about two more years uh, when they got out of it uh, in 2010. And so at this point, if Southern was still in the um, muck, and the uh, mire of uh, four and seven and three and eight seasons all the time, as it was in the uh, in the eighties and nineties, then there would have been no support to build a new stadium. And um, Southern succeeded a lot between '03 and '07, and that came at just the right time to uh, to help save the uh, the program. Uh, the arena. Uh, the one thing I did think had to change was uh, Southern. Uh, while the arena was playable. In terms of games only, you could be, you could make it more comfortable with new seats and things like that. But in and of itself, the arena was okay to play in. Southern was falling behind in terms of locker room uh, and weight facilities and all the other things that are important now in the game, are critical in the game at every level, not just mid-major. And so Southern would have to rehab those. That was critical. And, and Southern's... Uh, Southern's locker room facilities in basketball, both basketballs, men and women, and football, um, are the best um, of anybody in the Missouri Valley Conference. And so um, that part, I, you know, the level that they've, they've rehabbed them to, I certainly didn't uh, expect. Abe Martin Field's an ongoing project. It's much needed. It's still as it is, as it was built in 1964, and I, and I think Southern's going to be in a position to do something about that officially at the end of the year, or beginning at the end of the year. And so, um, um, you know, facilities are, are key, but here's the conundrum Southern's in, fellas. Um, it's been worse since it built the new facilities in all sports. And so just because you, you have new toys uh, doesn't mean you're, you're a better kid. And, um, and Southern has new toys, but it's not competing as it did when it had the old toys. Of course, speaking of new toys, some changes not only to the network lineup but to the basketball coaching staff as well. Obviously, we know Barry Henson's the new coach, but saw in the press release from Tom Weber yesterday that Matt Shaw is returning to finish yeah. his degree and will be a, a manager for the team. He still needs hours for graduation, so that's central to this. Um, he has some back issues that if, every, if the world is perfect from talking to him last week, if the world was perfect, Matt's still playing. But he's got some back issues. They're fine now, but it could go. And so he decided it was time to move on. Uh, there's an opportunity with the program that Coach Hinson provided, and Matt scooped it up. Um, he can get his degree before, at least before the end of the academic year, if not sooner. And, uh, and so that really uh, helps. It was good to see him the other day. He's a good man. And, um, and I'm, I'm very curious uh, to see how... How he is. He's trying to figure out if he wants to coach. Um, and if he does want to coach, he thinks he wants to be a, a college coach. But uh, I think he's going to learn. Uh, I'm sorry. I think he's going to use the coming season to see if he wants to, uh, to go into the coaching profession. Of course, uh, Learfield Sports, I understand, was looking for a new voice of Saluki women's basketball. Is that something that they're ready to announce? or has that? We have uh, Bryce Williams, who's an SIU grad from Sparta. Uh, has spent the last year and uh, currently at Monmouth doing Galesburg High School. 
uh, for the radio station in Monmouth, and he's also doing um, Monmouth College. He will join us in the, in a couple weeks, and we're thrilled to. We're thrilled uh, about it, and uh, and he's going to be a terrific addition. Well, it's tough to step in the shoes of Patrick Erickson, who did such a great job, not only for Learfield, Patrick's but I thought for us as Navy. well. Yeah, He's going into the Navy and not to do Navy's games. He'd eventually like to be a Navy SEAL. So We've had some people move on, but we've never had them enlist, fellas. Yeah, no, that's... that's <laughs> I, I mean, he had such a tremendous broadcast talent, but, I mean, it's hard to argue when somebody wants to go yeah. and serve the country. Yeah, it's a tough business, and the interest that we had in this job that we just filled with Bryce was amazing, as, as you guys know. It's a, it's a tough – sportscasting's a tough business uh, right now to break into, and so we're very lucky, and Bryce is going to be a terrific addition. Well, Mike, we have a final question. We usually go off the wall here with our social media question of the week, and this week's question is – what drink do you need to have in the morning to get your day started? <laughs> uh, any sort of diet, soft drink with caffeine. Non-Mountain Dew. At 25, Mountain Dew is okay for Reese. At 56, that's <laughs> a little too much caffeine for this old guy. So uh, I am not a coffee guy, so a diet, soft drink with caffeine. Perfect. Reese, thank you for taking the time to join us this morning. always adds a lot to our program, and, and needless to say, we're very appreciative of your of your appearance today. And I'm appreciative of you guys asking, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Mike Reese, Hall of Fame broadcaster of, of the SIU Salukis. Of course, you can hear Saluki football and Saluki basketball on the Saluki Sports Network. Many Withers broadcasting stations are part of that, especially the flagship 105.1 VZA. Uh, locally, in terms of Mount Vernon, 24 miles to the northwest, WRXX, X95 in Centralia. Why don't we just go down uh, the ones in our listening area. How about that? We'll go down to uh, WRUL, the Tri-State Boomer, 95.3 FM, WEBQ FM, 102.3, among others, WMOK AM 920, I believe. I miss, I'm missing one. And I forget which ones I've named already. So we're just going to leave it at that, of course. Withers Broadcasting is the uh, home for the Saluki Sports Network. We do need to take a break here on the Saturday Sports Show. When we come back, we will have... WMIX Sports Special Correspondent John Chatwins will talk about the Carmi El Dorado game from last night here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. It's what healthcare should be. We'll be back after these. The 2012 Chrysler 200 is the fastest growing sedan in its class, which is precisely why only a few remain at King City Chrysler Center. Hi, Roy Schmidt, Chrysler dealer in Mount Vernon. With 0% financing for up to 72 months or up to $3,500 in cash back rebates, we expect our remaining Chrysler 200s to move quickly. A top safety pick with best-in-class horsepower and fuel economy, as well as a touchscreen radio, you can get where you're going quickly and safely with a touch of luxury. See one of our sales associates today at King City Chrysler Center, Mount Vernon, or see our selection at kingcitychrysler.com. Also, did you know King City Chrysler is also a rental car location? Whether you want to take a weekend drive or feel like a celebrity on vacation in a luxury ride, Hertz can help you get the job done. You can find them on location right here at King City Chrysler Center, 1603 Broadway, Mount Vernon, and find us on Facebook. Broadcasting from the powerhouse on Broadway, WMIX, Mount Vernon, and all of Southern Illinois, another Withers Broadcasting Station. Just about everyone is trying to save money these days, especially when it comes to drugs and pharmaceutical products. Did you know the medicine shop can, and in many cases, offer better prices than the big discount stores? People need to know that independent pharmacy, in almost every case, is able to offer the same or better pricing than the chains can offer. Remember, your insurance price and copay is the same wherever you go. For cost savings and great service, try the medicine shop, 2339 Broadway in Mount Vernon. Hi, I'm Bria Ashby with Community First Bank. At Community First Bank, we take pride in our efforts to support our local community and economy. We understand that in these economic times, it's more important than ever to focus on the strength and growth of Jefferson County. For that reason, we are offering a CD special during the entire month of August, earning a 0.77% annual percentage yield with a minimum deposit of $5,000. Stop by one of our five Jefferson County locations before September 1st to take advantage of this special offer. Community First Bank with locations in Mount Vernon, Woodlawn, Dix, and Ina. Welcome back to Personal Banking. Member FDIC. And we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, MyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us for another hour. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. 
Proud to welcome back to the program special WMIX sports correspondent John Shadowins, of course, who watched the Carmyel Dorado game last night. Coach, first question I have for you out of the gate is, what was it like after coaching for so long to just be a spectator? You know what? It was a little strange, Chris, uh, but it was very, very enjoyable. I guess the strangest part of the day was leaving last night at school. You know, all the kids were excited, their uniforms and everything, and Chip had the field looking beautiful. It was a little strange leaving instead of, you know, sticking around and coaching a football game. But once I got to Carmi, I had a great time. Great game last night. Two teams, obviously, different levels, or at least where programs are at right now in midstream. Carmi's been that stalwart in the Black Diamond Conference forever. El Dorado up and coming success with Brandon Hampton. Do you think this was one of those wins? I know El Dorado's been in the playoffs, but this is one that El Dorado can hang their head on and say, now our program's heading in the right direction. You know, it, it might be, Danny. You know, Carmi's been the bully on the block, you know, for nearly 10 years, and I'm not sure that El Dorado's ever beaten. Carmine Diamond play, so it, it was definitely a huge win for them, and you could tell by the way they reacted after the game last night, they knew how much that win meant. El Dorado jumps out on top 6 nothing. did not get the conversion on the extra point as the kick failed, and Carmine comes back in a two-point conversion run 8-6. Had to be some momentum going Carmine's way, maybe some doubt on that El Dorado side at that point? Yeah, but you know what was going on there was El Dorado was still winning in the trenches. Carmine ripped down the field, I'm going to say in five plays, uh, five or seven, one or the other, but they were big plays on the perimeter. You know, El Dorado needed to look. They, I, you know, it's hard to create that kind of speed in practice. You know, Carmi come out with that sweep, and it hit quick. You know, and the El Dorado kids were back on their heels just a bit. But I think that El Dorado had the confidence. They knew they went on that 17 play drive, and they knew they could control that line of scrimmage. A 17 play drive. You just don't see things like that very often in high school sports, do you? No, you don't, especially in the first game. I mean, El Dorado did not put that ball on the ground at all last night, and they played about as flawless a game as a high school team could coming out of the gate. And I look, I look at also El Dorado, Dylan Roberts, 30 carries, 140 yards. Deaton had 65 yards rushing. A ground game for El Dorado. They never threw the football. I mean, you know, like you said, it's hard to expect on the first night, first week of the season, kids to come out and not turn the ball over that way. It sure is, you know. How impressive is it that El Dorado comes out not only and doesn't punt the football, but never has to throw it? I mean, that, that against against the Carmi Bulldogs, you know that that says a lot. Now I think you have to be a little bit careful after a first game. I've seen a lot of teams beat a, a conference favorite, and it turns out to be a little fool's gold, you know, as the season goes on. But I, I think Carmi is going to be all right. There are some questions up front. Uh, they're they're going to have to do some shoring up there. But uh, El Dorado beat a quality football team. And you bring that up because I, I was one to believe that in football the biggest progress or push made uh, change and getting better is between week one and week two. And as you said, El Dorado gets his win. They do have CZR next week at home, which, of course, the Bearcats did not play. That's their opening game due to the forfeit. Kind of things going to El Dorado's way right now as far as the first two weeks of the season. That's true. But, you know, CZR is going to have a little bit of an advantage next week because they're going to have a film in their hands. And I'm sure if Kurt Simon would have had an El Dorado film in his hand, the first half might not have been as lopsided as it was. It was 28 at halftime. And El Dorado, you know, they'll pound you, pound you, pound you, but they'll run that little counter underneath with uh, with little number eight. I forgot his name. But uh, he, uh, he, he had a little pattern going with, with, with his play calling. And that's things you pick up on film. So it'll be interesting to see how Coach McCurran at the uh, – CZR handles that next week. Yeah, is this the kind of same kind of Carmike team under Kurt Simon that we've seen? they got a couple of guys, a finesse football team, like to get guys out into the flat, out in the open, and use their speed against teams. Is this what Carmike looks like in 2012? You know, right now it does. And I, Here's the thing. They come out last night. They didn't run the spread as much last night as they did, la- as they did last year. You know, you've, here you've got Chase Saylor, and you've got Farr, and you've got Rankin kids that were in that system last year and, and, and did pretty well at it. And, and Kurt ran a lot of T last night and a lot of double type stuff. And I, I, you know, I know there's a method to his madness, and he knows his personnel a lot better than me, but that was a surprise to me. Carmi, of course, they were down 20-14 to 14 going into that fourth quarter, and El Dorado punches in with 3.38 to go. Obviously, some changes are made. Did you feel like Carmi had a little bit better footing in that second half, maybe got off that slow start early on? They did because what what they realized they had to go to a goal line defense to have a chance to stop El Dorado, and El Dorado <laughs> against the goal line defense in the middle of the field just kept running the football. Now, I think they converted four, three or four fourth downs during the game. They just kept coming and kept coming. 
when they needed three or four yards, they got it. It was, it was very impressive. And you look at Carmine, of course, Carmine loses. Then they got to go to Johnston City Week 2, Chester at home in Week 3. It's one of those deals where, you know, Kurt Simon, they don't have a lot of time to mess around because you could get a couple of losses hung on them. As a coach, when you got that going on, you come out, lose that first one. How hard is it to get a team back in and say, hey, this thing's not over with yet. we still got eight weeks left to go? Well, as far as getting your kids back, it, it's not as hard as you would think because kids are a whole lot more resilient than we coaches are. I'm going to tell you, Kurt, Kurt's threatening right now because you, you can't lose a home game like that. I mean, he, they didn't hold serve at home. Now they've got to go to Johnson City, and, and they're staring 0-2 right in the face. You know, and that, that's not a good feeling. And then I think if they got Chester the next week, like you said. So, uh, you know, it, 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 it's time to buckle down at your car mine, and I, I expect them to do so. There will be a great improvement between week one and week two for car mine because that's where the greatest improvement is, as you said. With a great coach like Kurt Simon, you know that's going to happen. Peeking around the diamond of the day, obviously Chester's at Vienna, but last night another game I thought was of interest is Fairfield beats Hamilton County, and Fairfield's kind of been laying in the weeds the last couple of years. Maybe some injuries and some other things have cropped up for prevent him from doing well. That's a pretty impressive win for Fairfield over Hamilton County, considering that game used to be very tight in Week 9 over the years. Yeah, it did, they've played very tight over the years. But what we have here, the, the new coach for Hamco from Ohio, you know, I'm not sure he's ever seen a double win before. Maybe he has, but if you haven't, oh, my goodness, you go out there and try to defend that thing. I mean, you take some lumps. And I'm sure he has film and all, but there's nothing like trying to set your defense up and defend it yourself and seeing it there in person. So that, that was awfully a tough first assignment for that coach as well. But you're right. For, for Fairfield, that's a huge win. You know, they're, they're laying back with nobody talking about them, but they've got a lot of kids back, including their leading rusher, Dylan Bailey. So um, they'll make things interesting. Today, Chester's at Vianna, and you know, obviously Chester's had some success recently. Everybody keeps waiting on Mike Rude and Vianna to perch out of that nest and fly on their own to the playoffs. Is this the year that Mike Rude maybe gets it done down there? I think it is. You know, I, I've, I've talked to Coach a little bit, you know, and he, he's downplaying it. You know, he's not, uh, he's not exactly guaranteeing a playoff spot, but I, I'm going to tell you, I think he'll be disappointed if he doesn't have at least a 5-4 and four record this year. And it wouldn't surprise me a bit to see him knock off those yellow jackets again today. Speaking of that, do you plan on attending that game today? Oh, we'll be there. I, I was kind of pleased to see that I'm going to get a chance to see Anna Jones for a little bit before I go. I think they start up at 10.30 this morning. So I'll, I'll take that one in and then head over to Vianna. And then next week, week two, any offerings on where you're thinking about going next week? Yeah, my preseason schedule had me in Johnson City to watch Carmine and Johnson City. Now, I thought I would be watching a 1-0 and Carmine team. But, you know, the Eldorado Eagles had, had other plans. But um, I, I'm, I'm torn right now between there and between, of course, Harrisburg and, and DuCoin's always invited as well. So uh, we'll see. Harrisburg DuCoin's an interesting thing because uh, we just I just looked this up while ago and tweeted it on our on Twitter. DuCoin is one and four on their field turf at home. Three losses last year, or four three losses, four losses now, and all that. You think there's some panic going on in Perry County right now? I don't think there's any panic going on with the staff or the kids, but I think I think in town and in the stands, yeah, there's plenty of panic. You know, and you know, you, you could they can blame the field and the fans. It, it's not, of course, we know it's not the field. You know, but when you think of Ducoin, do you really think of plastic grass? You know, they're, they're the physical football team that they were, and you know, it, it, it doesn't seem to fit, just like with Johnson City. But it's here to stay. I I, I picture Ducoin. You mentioned that funny. Yeah, I picture Ducoin playing at Van Beter in November with the tailgating, and you walk to the field and you see grass, you see mud down the middle of the field because there's nothing left. That's how I picture Ducoin. I don't know if it's they got so many toys to play with, and not really playing up to potential. They're kind of lacking, laying back, or if it's just one of those things where Ducoin's going through a cycle finally, and everybody else goes through multiple times. Well, you know, I, I listened to Ducoin's play-by-play guy last night on a, on a different station, and uh, what he blamed it on was execution last night. And plus, you can't turn the ball over like they did. They they, they think the talent is still there. They don't think they. If there's a drop off in talent, it, it, it's not a lot. They've, they've got the tools to win in the Mississippi. But you know, just like any team, you, you just can't put it on the ground. You've got to execute. Coach, obviously you're becoming very familiar with how we operate. Our last question, always the WMIX Sports Question of the Week, which uh, maybe your answer has changed now that you're, you're not coaching football any longer, but what drink do you need in the morning to kind of get up and get at it? <laughs> Same thing, good old strong black coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> exactly what it takes for me every day. If not, I have a horrible <laughs> headache. Coach, we appreciate. I, I hear you. Yeah, Coach, we appreciate the work you're doing for us, and we can't wait to talk about whatever game, whichever of those two games you decide to go to next week. Hey, guys, I am loving it. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's John Shadow and it's WMIX Sports Correspondent now. Yeah. It takes everything I have not to say Red Devils football, Coach. I, uh, that may slip out once in a while, but you, you kind of become a creature of habit once in a while. We need to take a break. No, we don't. Let's go ahead before we go to break and try to get a scoreboard in here in just a moment we'll talk about the scores from last night trying to run them down a little bit more frequently here on the saturday sports show you can always find them on facebook facebook.com slash wmix sports this might be the last time we actually run that down today but you can find it on facebook i'm conditioned to do it multiple times rochester over mount vernon 54 22 mosquito over breeze central 55 26 Mattoon over Triad, 20-14. to Altoff over Collinsville, 20-13. Marion over Granite City, 41-35. Carbondale over Murfreesboro, 25-14. O'Fallon over Cahokia, 42-8. to Centralia over Salem, 40-14. to Harrisburg over Mount Carmel, 28-12. to All those scores listed. You're probably thinking uh, they'll sound familiar. All those games have the nine opponents for Mount Vernon listed first on our Facebook page. Black Diamond, CZR over Elvarado Trico, 2-zip in the forfeit. J.C. over SVWW, 40-14. Fairfield over Hamco, 52-17. And El Dorado beat Carmi, 26-14. Non-conference, Benton over Carterville, 32-22. Heron over Massac County, 60-35. Highland over Ducoin, 17-14. Carlisle beat Nashville, 25-22. Pinckneyville over Redbud, 26-8. Dupo beat Sparta, 50-24. A.J. and Frankfurt at the half, 29 to nothing. That game was postponed last night due to the power outage at A.J., they are going to resume that one this morning in West Frankfort at 10.30. Also, day at 1 o'clock is Chester at Vienna. There you go. You can find all those scores on Facebook, facebook.com slash Sports. You can find them on there. All the games from last night, and we'll give you a preview of the games going on today there as well. We'll take that break. This is the Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. We'll be back after these. It's back and better than ever. Ren Lake College Golf Outlet Super Demo Day on Saturday, August 25th. Major manufacturers' representatives will be on hand to answer any questions about your favorite equipment, plus free balls and fittings. You can test the latest and greatest golf equipment in the industry from Callaway, Mizuno, Cobra, Bridgestone, Adams, and more. Enjoy free hot dogs and soft drinks at Super Demo Day only Saturday, August 25th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Rin Lake College Golf Outlet off of Potomac Boulevard in Mount Vernon. The Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois welcomes Dr. Beth Conrarty to their medical staff. Dr. Conrarty specializes in comprehensive pain management. You Using a multidisciplinary team approach by working with other specialists for optimal diagnosis and treatment of pain. Dr. Conrardi will treat most conditions of the spine, including management of cancer pain. Dr. Beth Conrardi, helping to make life better day after day at the Orthopedic Center of Southern Illinois in Mount Vernon. Call 618-242-3778. All right, I want to ask you something, but you have to promise not to laugh at me. (laughs) Okay, what? Do you think the State Farm jingle really works? Like, for real? Like, if you sing the jingle, will your agent actually appear and help you out? Yeah, of course it works. I saw it on the internet. In reality, having your own State Farm agent means having a real person to help you when you need them. Tony Wilt in Mount Vernon is that State Farm agent. So call him today at 242-1421. We welcome you uh-huh. back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX, my Withers That's Radio.com. Old. That's just coincidence. Is that right? Well, actually, it you wasn't. I was looking that? for. Well, no, I came in early. I had to get the, the bump music put right. in. I just picked from previous shows. <laughs> and that just, I was like, hey, I guess it works out. Uh, I thought maybe since, nah, he, just since that front man of that group, Poison, was going to be in, at the fair Monday night. That show's free. First come, did, first serve. I don't I, know. I can answer that class. You can tell me later. But yeah, how right. does a guy like that. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not real worried about. It. I'll tell you what I am concerned. There'll be a with. huge crowd. Concerned with in a good way. And that's Mount Vernon Rams golf. Yeah, we yeah. have Rams golf coach Quinn McClure on the program now. Coach, good morning. Good morning. You know, I've been a pretty good start to the Rams golf season thus far. Most recently on Thursday at Green Hills, you guys got a win over Salem, I believe, by 22 strokes. Matt, Matthew Williams was the match medalist, and things really seem to be rolling for Ram golf early on. Yeah, we're playing well right now. We had a uh, played once uh, last week, and then we had a full slate this week. We played. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, so uh, kids were kind of looking forward to Friday. They got a day off, so of uh, not having a match. So 
But yeah, we've been we've been busy, and with off season, you stay busy. So it's kind of a it's a two month season, and it's a it starts fast and ends fast. A lot of expectations on your golf team this fall. Talk about some of the kids that have been performing for your team this year. Well, we're um, we're four seniors, a junior, and four sophomores. So my my four seniors, um, Trevor Floda, uh, Matthew Williams, Hayden Paninski, and uh, Jonathan Stowers, they've been with me for four years and have pretty much played for four years. Uh, then my junior is, is uh, Nick Meyer, and he's, he's played um, all three years. Uh, and when I say play, he's been playing in the varsity matches from, from, from the get-go. So um, I'm going to lose uh, a lot next year. And I talked to my young kids last night, those four sophomores, and said, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but you're it next year. Uh, we've only got nine on our squad, and, and uh, like to carry 12, we only had 12 kids to try out. So um, I, I pared it down to a nine this year, and that's what we're going to go with. And um, so I've got, you know, going to lose four at the end of this year. So I've got to find, uh, I got to find some more guys for next year. When but you look for expectations, yeah, we've got, uh, I don't, you know, I don't, come out and say hey we're going to do this that and the other but i know this group they're they've they've set some some um some goals for themselves and i, I think one of them would probably be they would like to as a team get to the state tournament uh none of these guys have been there uh, trevor uh, float and missed last year going by as an individual um uh, by one or two shots uh so i think these guys are eager to get there uh hopefully we can we can get at least somebody there if not the whole group but we can get somebody to advance up there to that state tournament this year South Severn Conference golf, team champion, Altoff, individual champion at Marion. How tough is the South Severn Conference for boys golf? Uh, this is probably from from top to bottom. I mean, it's been good, but from top to bottom, it, this is probably the, the most even it is um, that it's been in, in several years. You know, for a while it was always Centralia, and then it, then it switched over, and now it's been Altoff. Uh, you know, and Marion... Um, you know, last year Belleville also won the 2A as a team, and then Mary had the individual state champion. Um, so we have always been probably I would say in almost the last five to eight years we've been somewhere about second. Probably more times we've been second than we've been third in the conference golf tournament. We just can't quite get over the hump. But uh, you know, we had our South Southern preview Wednesday down in Carbondale, and uh, Altoff was 155. Marion was 156, and we were 157. That's probably the tightest it's been in several years. So if our preview plays out, uh, we should have a, a good end-of-the-year conference tournament. Speaking, you've been around the business now. You've played. You're now coaching several years in this. What's changed about high school golf since you began coaching? Um, there's just a lot more tournaments that you can play in the summer-wise and even, even in the um, um, high school season. Uh, you can do a lot of traveling. You know, back when I was a junior, kind of the hot the hot thing to play was what was called the AJGA, which is the American Junior Golf Association, uh, and it's a it was it's a nationally known junior tour, um, and it was it's a pretty prestigious tour. It's kind of hooked up with a lot of of college coaches, and that's kind of where they do a lot of their recruiting is through that through that junior tour in the summertime. But um, you know, just here re- recently, there's a Illinois has a junior tour, uh, but you can, you know you can just get on the internet and search the internet for junior tournaments, and, and there's there's tons just in our area. You don't have to do a lot of traveling anymore. Is where used to if you wanted to play in a big junior tournament of a national uh, caliber tournament, you had to travel quite a way to do that, and you don't have to do that anymore. So just the opportunity to play uh, in more tournaments is a lot more readily available to kids nowadays than it was back when I was growing up. Now I'm going to let you get on your soapbox a little bit. <laughs> I, I, you and I talked about it the other day when I came out and watched a golf match at Green Hills on Thursday. The IHSA has changed things around. They keep messing with golf probably more so than any other sport, give or take. This year at 2A Regionals, you have a choice of Effingham, Mount Carmel, and Springfield. The sectionals at Hickory Ridge. You know, Is, is this going to be the sport that SI, or the IHSA keeps tinkering with as it goes on? Have you talked to Coach Turner this morning? No, I have not talked to Coach Turner yet. Turner on him. He gets jumping. He gets moved around quite a bit cross country and track too. So we were, first he and I are in the same office, so we get talking about that. But I don't know what their. I'm not going to say I'm bad mouthing, but um, you know I don't know what their reasoning is, the rationale behind it. But 
you know, in the state golf, there's four regionals that feed into a sectional, and we are still missing a regional. Um, they don't put the pairings out until September the 1st, uh, and they just assigned our, our sectional just this past, so we just finally found out where, where our sectional is going to be, but we, you know, usually if you, you see the four sites, you can pretty well figure where you're going to go, um, but since there's you know, they've got to factor in the whole, like we talked about it, uh, Thursday, you got to factor in the whole southern part of the state. You know, you got Marion, Carbondale, Murfreesboro, Heron, Harrisburg, with Frankfurt, Benton. Uh, you know, you got that whole quadrant down there. There's no place for them to go. There's no they're having to find a regional. And then you got to go over and look at all the Metro teams that are uh, a 2 A team. Where are they going to send them? Are they going to send them to Springfield? And then because we don't have a, um, a regional down in this area, it's, I don't know I don't, what we're going to do. I have a feeling I'm going to be going east, probably over to Mount Carmel. Uh, but stranger things have happened, as you guys oh, know, yeah. with, with dealing with the state. Uh, there's no telling where I may end up. We may end up hosting one because I called them and told them we would be more than willing and, and happy to host. And um, I don't think that will happen just from from the geographics of where they've got to send people. I don't know that there's any way we could host one. So. It, they always make it quite interesting. Has this made it easier for teams uh, moving them around, shuffling around one class to the other as far as advancing the state? Um, I don't know. Our 2A is pretty tough. Um, you know, I would almost kind of like to go to Mount Carmel now because, you know, Massac's really good. Benton year in, year out's pretty good. You know, some of the smaller schools that got bumped up to 2A are pretty good. So almost for me, if I would get shipped over to to Mount Carmel from an um, advancing standpoint, it may be better for me to go to to Mount Carmel than it would be to stay here. So, we you know we wish you nothing but the best. But our final question, and uh, we've added this this year, is our social media question of the week. We asked this week, "What drink do you need to have in the morning to get your day started?" Uh, well, doctor's orders, no more Mountain Dew. <laughs> so I, I have to. I'm on the uh, diet, caffeine free. Uh, drink so oh it takes thick. Yeah, not fun. Wow. So I've, I, I've actually started to slide in a little coffee in the morning, and uh, I treat myself to a Mountain Dew on the weekends. There you go. But minus the doctor, it would be a nice cold Mountain Dew, 32 ouncer. Wow, the Coach Turner. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> Very nice. Coach, we wish you the best of luck throughout the All rest right. of the golf season and hope to talk to you again sometime All this right, season. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thanks. That's Coach McClure, Quinn McClure, head coach. See, I'd say Coach McClure first because otherwise mm-hmm. I'll say Mike. And, yeah. uh, I mean, that's just the way it is. That's how it works. <laughs> but Rams golf is off to a great start. And he mentioned Coach Clint Turner. And um, I have been told that Coach Turner has this – just this amazing Mountain Dew habit. So we'll have to get Coach Turner on talk Ram Cross Country as well. And I had that arranged, I thought, a couple of weeks ago to try to have him on last week or this week. Unfortunately, I lost his email address and I lost his cell phone number. So I'm working on getting all that back so we can have Coach Turner on, of course, to talk Ram Cross Country here in 2012. This is a Saturday Sports Show presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. We do need to take a quick break here. Crossroads Community Hospital, of course, it's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. We, well... Would be back after this if I'd get my act together and have the right window pulled up. You know what? That happens. It's Beauty Alive Radio, ladies and gentlemen, WMIXMyWithersRadio.com. We'll be back with Fairfield football coach Justin Townsend after the break. Back after these. Lady Rams Volleyball is back, and WMIX and Community First Bank are set to bring you the action. Log on to MyWithersRadio.com for a complete Lady Rams Volleyball broadcast schedule and tune in to AM 940 on game night. Chris Hugo and Danny Zerinsky will bring you a great assortment of matches on the radio, or you can watch online at MyWithersRadio.com. Powered by Community First Bank, welcome back to Personal Banking. Are the features with your free checking account disappearing? Hi, this is Nina Reitenauer, Relationship Banker with People's National Bank in Mount Vernon. A free checking account from People's National Bank includes unlimited check writing, online banking, no minimum balance requirements, bill pay, a Visa check card, and only takes $100 to open. Stop by People's National Bank and get the free checking account you deserve. People's National Bank, member FDIC. Non-usage fees may apply. 
When an emergency happens, time is everything. And you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency... Call 911. <laughs> we welcome you back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIX. MyWithersRadio.com. Sometimes what happens off air stays off air, and it's, it's, it's better for everybody that way. However, we are presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital, yeah, it's what healthcare should be. Oops, I jacked that up a little loud. My apologies there. Of course, I'm used we. To that too. <laughs> I bet you are. We welcome, of course, Fairfield Mules head coach Justin Townsend, whose team last night had a, had a pretty sizable win over Hamilton County, 52-17. to Coach, well, first of all, welcome back to the program. Secondly, congratulations on keeping the Week 1 streak alive. Yeah, kept it going. You didn't jinx it. So that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, great win for us Week 1 going in. Obviously, you always have a little bit more anxiety. You know, you're not sure what the other team is going to do, especially with a new coach and a new system. And then, obviously, you're not quite sure – what you got? You know, you know, I thought we were, thought we got a chart, chart being a good football team. Uh, we still had a lot of question marks. We still do, but going into you know week one and after last night, we got a little better idea. Hey, coach, you see, you can't blame me, Danny Zerwinski, for that streak because it's still alive at twelve. So, no worry about superstitions. You jump out early on Hamilton County last night, fourteen zip. With that going on, you spent all summer worrying, and I'll ask you this. How hard was it? You've seen the opponent. It's a familiar opponent, but to prepare for a new coach coming into a, to a program like Hamilton County. Well, just you know, it helped a little bit in that we, you know, we did have a week one, and that we were able. We had a little more time to prep the thing. Um, we, we had a little idea of what they might do, um, but uh, we just kind of prepared overall for a little bit of everything. And, you know, and they did run some spread. They did run from you know high formation under center. Um, so it, it helps us, and it's going to help us, I think, throughout the year because we did prepare for so many things already. The guys, the, you know, the defense is already going to have a little bit of an idea of how to adjust to this thing. So it was good for us. Uh, you know, the main thing, offensively, we were clicking. Uh, I think we had over 480 yards rushing and uh, over 250 at halftime, and we had held them to seven yards total defense at halftime, so, or total offense. So our defense played well. Um, didn't have any tor- two, and didn't have any turnovers. We uh, picked off a couple of their passes. I'd say uh, one thing that maybe we need to address: our, our special teams uh, could improve a little bit. But uh, overall, team effort was awesome. Very proud of the kids. Very proud. Obviously, you have to be as your team with that dominating effort last night. You jump out with 38 points in a row. You scored the first five times. At that point, do you have to kind of get your kids over and tell them, hey, guys, it's not going to be this easy and only tonight but the rest of the year, but kind of keep them level-headed in a case like that to start the season? Yeah, and, you, you know, it's, you know, you're trying to get your reps in, too. You're trying to get your kids in the game shape because, you know, no matter how many sprints you run in two a day, it's not stimulating a football game and a game speed. So, um but at the same time, our, we got a pretty mature group, and uh, we, you know, we felt, hey, we did what we were supposed to do. That's what we wanted to do. Um, so uh, that was good. We were able to get a lot of kids out there, a lot of younger kids. You know, with the big concern, and I think I mentioned it to you when you had me on the show a few weeks ago, is depth. So we were able to get a lot of our younger kids out there and kind of work them in in the third quarter with our first team just to be able to evaluate those guys on the film. So uh, it, it, that was huge for us as well. So, um, but we got a pretty level-headed bunch. So they, they know week in and week out we've got to prepare and just take one week at a time And because we aren't talented enough to, to look past anybody or to look too far ahead. So um, I, our kids are going to do that, I'm sure. An interesting thing, you talk about taking one week at a time. Familiar opponent last night, new coach. Next week, familiar opponent, new coach. Week two, but Elvarado Trico hasn't played yet. Same scenario setting up for next week as far as learning stuff and what's going to happen as far as getting ready for the Falcons. Yep, same approach. Uh, not sure what they're going to do. I'm sure they were probably there scouting us last night. 
Uh, I know Coach Rue down at Lyanna was. And so, um, you know, we're just going to take the same approach, try to eliminate some of the mistakes we make, you know, worry about us, improve the things that we can improve on, and uh, sure up with special teams and, and just kind of keep preparing for maybe a little bit of everything. And, uh, you know, defensively, with our personnel, um, we're able to adjust, whether you go to 4-5 or five wide or you pack it in double tight. We're athletic enough, I feel like, on defense that, that we don't have to switch up enough personnel, you know, a lot of personnel. So, um, let's say, yeah, that's the approach we're going to take. A mature group, as you mentioned earlier, handling situations good and bad and indifferent. How much did the 4-5 and five record last year missing the playoffs kind of play in their motivation as they go here in 2012? Well, it motivated me a lot, personally. You know, I, um, you know, you work so hard to build up something, and uh, and then you take a step back. And uh, I think the kids were the same way, especially a couple of these seniors. Uh, man, it just really, really bothered them. And um, they made sure the underclassmen knew, hey, that's unacceptable. That's not what we're about. And, uh, you know, they, they don't want to be in that same spot this year. Uh, I think it's motivated a lot of them. Uh, we've had great, great two and a half weeks of practice as far as, you know, finishing drills, work ethic, uh, great attitude. And uh, I think it carried over last night, and I'm hoping that it just continues to build each week. And that's, you know, that's what I told them. I said, we want to be the best football team we can possibly be by the end of week nine and hopefully be in the playoffs playing our best football. Going into the Black Diamond, I'm sure you've looked at scores and things last night. Did anything surprise you as far as the Black Diamond's concerned last night? Um, you know, everybody's talking about El Dorado Carmine, but man, El Dorado is big and physical, and they're going to create some problems. I mean, that junior class is loaded, and then they got these seniors that have been used to winning last two years. You know, so Coach Hanson's done a tremendous job building that program up, so I, I, I wasn't really surprised. I thought they, I knew that they were going to be very physical. It sounds like uh, they basically kept the ball out of Carmi's hands with their offense, and uh, um, but I know Carmi's going to regroup. They, you know, Chase Taylor is a tremendous athlete, and Coach Simon's a great coach, so you know, they'll get back together. Johnson City, I thought, kind of did what they would do, although, you know, it sounds like that's replaced him tough for a while, which doesn't surprise me either, so... Um, no, not a, not a lot of surprises, but I, I, I think you're going to start to see, you know, there's going to be the teams at the top, and I think you're going to have your middle of the pack teams, kind of like it seems like it always breaks down. Of course, uh, Coach, you know by now that we like to ask kind of an off-the-topic question to wrap up each interview. It's our WMIX Sports Question of the Week, and we this week our question is, what drink do you kind of need, whether it's coffee, whether it's a soda, to kind of get up and go every morning? I'm a Pepsi Max guy. That's Pepsi Max. What I, that's my drink of choice. Uh, I think anybody around the high school or the kids, they probably would know that. Uh, I probably drink too many of them, actually. But uh, that's what I, I – that, and I realize that's not the healthiest answer either. But uh, that, that's my choice of drink, absolutely. Is that because you got to have that energy to teach, to coach, and to deal with, I, the, Dick, and, and guess, deal with the Bruce Dickey and others like over there? Coffee. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I got to have a little extra caffeine boost in the morning. But uh, it's not. It's tough to see me with one or two a day. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Townsend, I know. I know you're busy this morning, but thank you for taking the time to join us here on the Saturday Sports Show. And good luck next week in Diamond Play. Thank you. Thanks for having me. That's Coach Justin Townsend, and uh, glad that he wanted to be on this week. I mean, that's just kind of kind of amazing how that one kind of fell into our laps there. But we are glad to have Coach Townsend and. Head coach of the Fairfield Mules who continues his week one winning streak. We need to take a break. When we come back, plenty more to talk about here on the Saturday Sports Show. It's presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what health care should be. We will be back after these. Yes, we really will. Get PMB to go mobile banking now at People's National Bank. Hi, this is Monica Wilt, Relationship Banker at People's National Bank. With PNB to go mobile banking, check your balances, see transaction activity, transfer between accounts, and pay bills all from your mobile phone. PNB to go mobile banking makes banking even more convenient. People's National Bank, making your life easier since 1909. People's National Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
When an emergency happens, time is everything, and you don't want to spend that time in a waiting room. So choose Crossroads Community Hospital with our 30 minutes or less ER service pledge. The entire team is committed to working diligently to have you initially seen by a physician, physician assistant, or nurse practitioner within 30 minutes of your arrival. When minutes matter, choose the ER that doesn't waste time. Choose Crossroads Community Hospital. Visit CrossroadsCommunityHospital.com slash faster to learn more. If you are experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. And welcome back to the Saturday Sports Show, WMIXMyWithersRadio.com. Glad to have you with us as we shift gears here. Presented by Crossroads Community Hospital. It's more than a hospital. Yeah, it's what healthcare should be. You bet it is, and of course, glad to have you with us. Talked high school football and and some high school golf, and hoping to get some cross country here in the not too distant future. Here on the Saturday Sports Show, uh, volleyball. We had a volleyball broadcast. Lady Rams start mm-hmm. off their season the right way, twenty five nine, twenty five ten winners uh, over the Weber Trojans. Obviously, we're not going to gloat about that uh, with Weber being in our very own county, but uh, good to see some cross county volleyball going on. We'll have some cross county volleyball next week, not next week, the week after. On Thursday, September the 6th, as the Lady Rams travel to battle, the Lady Cardinals of Woodlawn will be there. Uh, not sure on video just yet, but we'll see what we can do. Woodlawn had a big win over SVW, another half-county team, I guess, in the co-op. Cessarville or Waltonville on Thursday night as well. Not bad. So Woodlawn's off to a good start. A lot of, Benton got a lot a big of hype win. and expectations. Benton got a big win over Marion, uh, of course, this week as well. I believe that was also Thursday night. But... Um, a lot going on in the world of national sports as well. We're almost to college football. We are almost to uh, to uh, the end of the. What's Boston that called? It's three letters. Oh, the National Football League. Yeah. The NFL is almost coming. But in case you're not paying attention, apparently not only are the Dodgers worth apparently two billion according to their buyers, but they're willing to add three hundred million uh, in payroll. And I didn't know the trade was finalized, but what a big, massive trade between the Red Sox and the Dodgers. It's hard for me to uh, keep a straight face over here uh, on the microphone. But, uh, yeah, that was uh, the buzz started. uh, When you have the clearing waivers this time of year, usually it's a formality. You just sort of test the waters. And for some of the teams that's had bad contracts over the years that try to get rid of a guy possibly, uh, I think Soriano from the Cubs has been cleared uh, last probably three years, I guess, when his knees started giving way. But, you know, you have a handful of guys uh, that doesn't that will that will go on waivers. Um, teams will put people on, and the most interesting one eventually come out was Carl Crawford uh, was bannered in a trade earlier from the Red Sox with with about anybody, and uh, it didn't work out uh, for the Angels trying to acquire him. And then they knew he was having a little bit of elbow problems, but then Boston went ahead and put all their high salary guys on waivers and the most attractive one at the time was adrian gonzalez and lo and behold he was claimed by the dodgers and then the phone started ringing you have 48 hours in uh, which to make the trade finalized and boston said well if you have interest in that and you've got all this money to spend then we're going to give you crawford and oh yeah you're going to take josh beckett uh and nick punto got thrown in the deal as well so <laughs> I think it's going to end up being the last I saw was going to be a total of nine players trading sides. Uh, Boston, in return, gets James Loney, the first baseman from the Dodgers. Uh, De La Rosa, the pitcher that Boston gave up originally, lost to the Dodgers. They want him back, and he's undergoing surgery now as well. I think Steve O'Day, the outfielder uh, from the minors, and two other high-caliber prospects will go back in Boston in return for those four players. So, uh you know, I, I said it last night, and I uh, will say it again. Uh, uh, you know, an organization, they won twice in 86 years. I guess just went to their heads a little bit, and now they're sort of becoming the laughing stock, you know, of baseball right now. And then, lo and behold, late last night, I seen that uh, waivers were also put on Jacoby Ellsbury and John Lester. Um, go figure that one here. Jacoby Ellsbury, one of the best young center fielders out there hopefully the injuries hasn't slowed him down you know like a Grady Sizemore injury occurs to him over the years but John Lester may need to change the scenery uh, as well but uh, I guarantee there'll be some people looking at those guys right now also amazing this time of year in Major League Baseball up until a few days from now 
Yeah, Crawford, I think, is $108 million left. Gonzalez was right at 113. Um, Beckett, I think, had about 30 some odd left on two more years, full two more years. So you're a hair under $300 million. But make no bones about the new TV deal that Anaheim was able to get and the Dodgers also, and the Dodgers having all the new money. Uh, they've got it to spend. Uh, and they're willing to take a chance. And Carl Crawford probably is going to be all right. It's just that elbow uh, that was not enabling him to throw and then that lead elbow, um, that that back elbow for him for his power stroke is gone. Uh, Beckett, you know, he comes over to the National League. He could be a little more effective getting out of the American League East for sure. So uh, the Dodgers willing to take a chance and – Adrian Gonzalez, what a what a player to get, and I, I'm just still uh, laughing inside about how they said that he just wasn't going to be able to fit in Boston. That's uh, that's amazing to me. And not only with that, you've got to look down the future too about the possibility of uh, a managerial. As I say, I'll tell you who's not going to fit in Boston. You know, coming up pretty soon too. <laughs> that was a bad holiday start. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that was bad. I mean, I seriously, I mean. You know, the glasses and fake mustache of the Mets should have been enough to tell everybody don't hire that guy. I, you know what? Exactly. I thought that was the funniest thing ever. But I was, hold on. I was 16 years old. Right. So it's yeah. like. You now, have a different perspective. You know, thing, now right? that I'm 29, it's like, wow, that guy's an idiot. You want to do that when you're in the game. In my opinion. Winning, I'm not saying that's fact. Funny. Sure. But in the way he did it, the way he, you know, he had an edge about him on Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN. And, again, you don't get to where he's at without having that edge, I guess. Sure. So he's going to be out. He did invent the rap. He can probably go back to ESPN because Terry Francona is probably going somewhere next year. He's had a year off. You know. Did you know Boston's that? Boston's disintegrated. Theo's gone. The whole the whole kid and caboodle is starting to blow up. Bobby Valentine invented the rap at his restaurant in Stanford, Connecticut. Oh, I tell you, you learn some things here. People listen. If it's, on, Wiki- if it's on Wikipedia, it must be true. Well, and, and this is long range, but I, I think it may be closer than what people think. Mike Scotia, the, the great dot, uh, Angels uh, manager, had signed a big extension a couple of years ago. They really liked his work ethic and habit and, you know, have, have done wonders for that program. But yet there's still new management there a little bit. Possibility uh, there would be a player to be named in this. It would be more like a trade, but I could see and heard some rumblings Possibly him leaving the Angels, uh, looking to go f- for other pastures, and to, uh, Tito Francona now getting back on the field at another place on the West Coast. Can I throw somebody else's name out there? There's two other ones I'm going to throw out. You're going to throw, throw under, bu- under the bus? I'm gonna th- no, no, oh, okay. no. Not I'm going to throw another name out. Not hurt a lot. In the way. Enjoy this Laying summer. in the weeds. Laying in the weeds. Pedro Be a Serrano. perfect spot. I don't know if it's true or not. Just tip me with who's there and who's not in Anaheim. Tony La Russa. He's not retired. I'm telling no, you, no, he he's coming back. Oh, there's no back. doubt. No, he's the That'd other be one. Perfect I would. for Anaheim, well, LA of Anaheim, whatever they are. The only thing that would would stop that is if he could find out for sure if Oakland was going to move. If Oakland moves, they play baseball in Oakland. Oh, yeah, they had that movie Moneyball. I yeah, Moneyball, yeah. That's, how's that been working for you the last 15 years? I'm so sick of that. But anyway. Um, it's a good movie, though. Yeah, it was all right. I thought Chris Pratt did a good job as Hatterberg. His dream is San Francisco, if there would ever be an opening there. you know, but, That's not coming. But I don't think that's coming in the near future. The only thing that would slow that down if, again, I said Oakland, if they moved. Where would, would they go move? In with Billy San Juan? Bean, uh, San Jose. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I mean that's, that's you know same very area. Bottom, you know, so that could be it. But Tony Larus is not done, and I'm not too sure. Even though he's enjoying his time right now, Joe Torrey's name could pop up again, and those two guys. Uh, he liked that like California him. Sun. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's going to happen. But Francona is going to be in a dugout next year somewhere, and I. You know what? I, I he's a good baseball guy. I'm. I was the first guy happy to see him leave Boston, trust me. I am curious to see what Donnie Baseball can do with the Dodgers with some talent. Sure, absolutely. I mean, too, absolutely. granted, you're going you're gonna to say, well, he has the pitch and he has Matt Kemp, but, you know, get, <laughs> I, I'm just curious. Because if, if he can't do it, then he can't do it, and we know. But, you know, he didn't really have the 
the best to go with last year. There was a turmoil. There was a sale this year. You know, I mean, I like, I'm a he, Donnie he baseball had guy. Five hundred last year, right? Exactly. Yeah. Check to check, and literally check to check with the right. Dodgers. Oh yeah. And now they've signed some people. They've added three hundred million in salary, which. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of tread off those tires they're getting. Gonzalez is a great pickup because Loney, James Loney's been an enigma. I've watched a lot of Dodgers the last five years. He's been an enigma with Kemp and Ethier. That might be Beckett's type of place. Yeah. Am I allowed to have some beer and chicken in the clubhouse? Well, you know, again, new look, new place. Sure. Women? Adrian Gonzalez back in the NL West. Hello. <laughs> you know, he raked in the AL. He'll rake even better now back yeah. in familiar territory. Especially when... <laughs> You know, he's back in the NL West, but not in a park where you have to hit home run 500 feet to get it out of the park. I mean, only at night. That's, that's true. The dark that's true. The We've learned that from Uncle Vinny over the past yeah. Ocean decades. <laughs> but it's, uh, yeah, and, and it's still, well, there's a few hours left to get this done, and I, I think it probably will. I don't know if the league, because there's so much money involved, if they have to basically give the okay on that. But even another ironic thing is that when you put them on uh, waivers this late in the year, the August uh, waiver wire, uh, when you lose a guy, you're allowed to pull one guy back off. Well, Boston didn't do that. They could care less, obviously. Yeah. So, And they tried to give back it away. The, the other team I was thinking about was uh, Atlanta. Uh, they begged Atlanta to take Beckett. And, mm-hmm. I mean, basically Atlanta wasn't even going to give up a ball. Uh, Ted Turner ball. was there, they would have. Yeah, Here, here's another yeah, if thing. If he'd been off the old planes, he probably would have. First baseman spending last few years. Tiger spent two hundred fourteen million on Fielder. Angel spent two hundred forty million on Pujols. Red spent two hundred fifty one and a half million on Vado. And last night, L.A. spent two hundred sixty million to get Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we talked off the air the the young prospects that the Dodgers are giving Boston back in return do not compare with Mike Rizzo that they lost when they traded for Gonzalez to begin with the San Diego and the other pitcher, his name escapes me right now, but they're not getting any value in return uh, prospect per prospect. And now Rizzo's naturally going to have a great career up in Chicago. But, uh, you know, it's just the uh, the roller coaster goes on, the merry-go-round goes around again for uh, the Red Sox, and it's just uh, it's comical to Yankee fans, it really is. What about that wild card race? And so there are two. Mm-hmm. Two now. That I mean, that is official. You know, it just kind of snuck in there. It's Major League Baseball took a page out of the IHSA playbook on that. But uh, you, ha- you have the Rays, the Orioles, and the A's up for the two in the in the American League. Of course, the A's and Orioles are tied for the second one. Uh, then you have the National League, of course, the Braves and Cardinals. Same race as last year almost. Pirates, what's up with that? They're, they, if they're faltering, they're faltering at least later than they did last year. A little year. bit later. A little bit later. And then yeah. maybe ne- if it's not this year, maybe next year they can figure out how to close out the entire season and, and return to glory and get back to the postseason because I would actually like to see that. I think a lot of people would, but you also got to look at now for the uh, central division of, of the National League, Houston's gone, so you don't get your automatic qualifier wins you know, <laughs> from that. So. They're out of that division next year. So, so and then that that means that there literally would be an interleague series every every day, right? Mm-hmm. There yes. would have to be with there the fifteen to, and fifteen yeah, split. Yep. Hey, all four Baltimore getting in. Something for a Baltimore Pittsburgh World Series bring back some nostalgia. But oh, I, I thought so you could hear hear my boy Gary Thorne. Uh, Gary or watch yeah, my boy Gary okay, Thorne. Yeah, no, he wouldn't be on Jim the playoffs Palmer, anyway. No. Well, he'd do radio. No. Like overseas. Can I say this, too, speaking of baseball? You don't like Gary Thorne, do you? Jim Parham would be No, you're reading oh, okay. my mind incorrectly. Oh, okay. Uh, Little League World Series. Oh, uh, my gosh. I don't need to see 50 games of Little League World well, Series. Well, now CBS Sports is airing Cal Ripken. 12-year-olds 12, 12 throwing curveballs drive me bonkers. Learn how to place a fastball and throw a changeup. I will give a little credit. I've watched a little bit more this year than I have in the past because I don't say I was boycotting. But we got through a stretch of uh, four or five years in a row there that we would show a pitch, and then we have to go to the stands and see all the T-shirts of that's my boy, that's my son, and I'm with her because that's her son, and I'm with her, and I'm with her because that's her son. Mm-hmm. I thought the Little League World Series was about them 12-year-olds on the field. No, I yeah. really, 
really don't care. And RC Cola. Hey, give me back to the day where you, you know. have the one Saturday game for it all. Well, I don't need to see all the games of the subdivisions. And I mean, we talked about this. Out. Back in the day, at least when I was growing up, it was the American semifinals, the world semifinals. Yep. No, no, not even that. It was just no. the American the finals, American the, world, the world finals, the game. and then the, the, the world championship. Afternoon. Exactly. Yes, you're right. Because I remember in 92, it was on the Saturday afternoon that Her- Hurricane Andrew was getting ready to make landfall. Yeah. Or it was, was really only, close. I think it made landfall on the Sunday. For a long actually. time, it was just, just the one game, then they added the semifinal, and then that was it. But uh, I, I catch some of the certain players that I want to watch. I want to watch the big kid pitch, you know, naturally and hit, too. But I, I really did. It was very disgusting to see so much time spent in the stands. And, hey, it's all right to pan the crowd with the camera and, and catch a section and see them hooping. All that. That's great, too. I mean, that's what parents are good about. But I don't need to read the T-shirts and all the signage and stuff to let everybody know who's who. I'm, I'm there to watch that kid play. Sorry. I just no, I always love the, the uniforms. Far East. Midwest, yeah, things of I that just, nature. The, the geographic, just to see the kids out there chucking a curveball. Oh, that was a great curve. I'm thinking, dude's twelve. Arm's going to fall off at fourteen. He's not going. He's going to be studying something else. You know, I mean, of course, this is Greg Maddox and me. Of course, I'm just throw the fastball, throw the change up, spot that fastball, and when you get to be eighteen, you can add something else. Well, those kids will have their wrists left. So there right. you go. <laughs> I mean, they'll they'll be able to naturally live their lives and still be able to have decent handwriting by the time they're they're fifty. Mm-hmm. Or be able to write, period. I mean, we li- I like the Little League World Series, don't get me wrong, but it's way too blown up. I start in August, and they're showing division round games to get to the sub-series region, and it's too much. And it's so condensed. That's what is the, yeah. Yeah, that's what's the bombardment of all that. You know, you have that short period of time to do that, and that's every channel you turn on, there it is, and then you're getting replays on some networks, and you can't tell which is live and which not, and then basically you've got to have a program guide to – to figure it out so you know sometimes less is more I mean, well anymore the only time clear. that you can tell between tape delay and live is if you're watching a game with sunlight and you know it's at night yeah <laughs> I mean, that's about <laughs> that's an easy way <laughs> or yeah, or, or the exact opposite i mean anymore and then you could probably you can watch mm-hmm. them on online which is kind of great because you can watch rams football and rams athletics online here through wmix as well not that i'm trying to get that in there but it might, maybe it's a little much and maybe it's not I know for the people putting it out there, it's definitely not because <laughs> oh, cash register is ringing. Money. Absolutely, and that's what drives it all. We all know that, and that's fantastic. But you know, just from you know a, a purist standpoint, um, they could alter it just a little bit for my tastes. But I'm sure they're not listening. They might be. They never can tell. They could be. Might be if they wanted to. Sure, it's available. It's definitely available for them to listen. Hey, it's Duke Face State Fair time. How about? F- Fate uh, stare, that too. <laughs> just when I was in the ecstasy of the Red Sox imploding. You had forgotten you, about you, it. You brought the fair back. You brought it back. Well, the fair's going on now. It we is. have W. Mike's t-shirts to give away all all week and weekend and weekend. There's two weekends and a week in there. Of course, we are located in the entertainment tent. Not the free entertainment. Well, the entertainment is free, but it's not the free entertainment tent. Of course, we will be there today, tomorrow, the day after that, and all the way up until Labor Day. So we hope you come see us to get a WMIX t-shirt and much more, of course, as we'll have some giveaways from out there as well. Some of your sports team will be out there various days, so that's why I mentioned that here on the sports show. You can come see us and uh, see if we can give you a WMIX t-shirt. We'll also be giving away t-shirts from our sister station, X95, as well. So, you know, maybe if you're a Centralian and win an X95 t-shirt, we'll have some of those to give away. Uh, at the Ducoin State Fair all week. But here, finishing up with, with some quick sports thoughts, we are almost to football. Not high school football. We're there. College football soon, this next coming weekend. week. And then the week after that. No, next weekend is also. No, next weekend's college. September the weekend after that, the ninth, I believe. Cowboys, Giants. The ninth? Fifth. Wednesday night. No, I mean night. this first Sunday would be the ninth. Yes. And then the fifth. A Wednesday night start? Wednesday night. Really? Was yeah. that on NFL Network? Uh, because they're working around the Democratic on Fox? National Convention. Seriously. Really? Yes. The president will speak on the 6th, so NBC moved it up to the Wednesday so they're not to... Oh, it's on NBC. Right. Gotcha. Because if we're on yeah, this... Sunday, not, Sunday night special. Yes, this week's the Republican <laughs> National Convention, and then... Where have I been? 
next week well, I know is the Democratic National Convention. So I believe on that Wednesday they move it to the Wednesday so they can stay off the Thursday. Is it an election year? Speak. That's what they say. I'm not really that oblivious to life. I'm, I'm being facetious, obviously. And but then the 5th, the 9th. Nice. Stuff like that, yep. It's amazing double, how we're able to coexist on politics and sports. The doubleheader on Sunday double night. Doubleheader on football. Sunday night, yeah. football. Who's playing? No, no, I'm worried about September 5th. After that, I'm oblivious. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, being a Pittsburgh fan, I've just soon forfeit our first game. That way we don't get guys suspended. Because that? oh, that's we're the, playing at, first at, of at all. Denver. So Ryan Clark can't play. Right. So we're playing against Peyton Manning. And, and you can't touch and him. And if we touch him, there'll be a flag and th- you'll be thrown. James so Harrison just, walks on the th- field, penalty. I just have, assume penalty. forfeit the game, start the season 0-1, and, and go back home. That's that's how I, that's how I feel about the Peyton Manning. I'll sir have a game or, tonight uh, in more ways than one. You're coaching the St. Louis Rams yeah, against the Dallas have, Cowboys. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's true. <laughs> I've got September 1st, Michigan, Alabama, September 5th, Dallas Giants. That's my two football games coming up. It's going to get busy. It's mm-hmm. the best Absolutely. sports time of the year. Some well, say. Tonight, I'll watch it for five minutes. I'm going to listen on the radio playing, on AM 940. I don't get that. Dallas already hosts Rams later this year. Can I not play that in St. Louis where people like me can go? Just tell me. Where are they playing it? Dallas? Okay, I just oh, want to make oh, sure it wasn't way, somewhere else. Have we got 30 seconds here? Yeah. How about the woman going to sue Jerry Jones on the 109-degree day in a skirt that sets on the aluminum bench in front of Cowboy Stadium and gets her legs burnt? Aren't we smarter than that sometimes? No, we are not. Coffee from fast what food chains are hot. What in the world is it coming to? I don't know. In the blazing sunshine, and you see Texas. an aluminum, be- aluminum bench there just glowing, and you sit down on that. Wow, that was a blurb the other day that just about threw me out of the car. I I'd about run off the road, but that's unbelievable. This unbelievable. Welcome to society. Fast food coffee yep. says hello. <laughs> man, oh man, it's the world we live in. Of course, speaking of the world we live in, we're going to be living in a high school sports world all throughout these fall months. Our next broadcast will be Friday night. Rams football, Mount Vernon Rams football against Mascoutah. It'll be six forty. Video online at MyWithersRadio.com. St. Louis Rams football tonight as the Rams are at Dallas to take on the Cowboys. It'll be a pregame of 6 o'clock on AM 940, so right here, Rams and Cowboys. And, of course, the Cardinals still on all season long and what looks like it could be a nice little playoff run. So St. Louis Cardinals foot baseball <laughs> on WMIX-FM. This is WMIX Mount Vernon, a free service of Withers Broadcasting. Thank you for listening. NBC News Now.